Hey there, Manifesting fam. This is Marna. I am a Manifestation and Mindset Coach, and I'm reaching out to you today to help you with five things that all empathic people can do to help them thrive in all ways while living in this sometimes challenging modern world. Now, if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up so it can reach the people who need to hear it the most. Now, these five things will help you improve your relationships, help you attract high vibrational folks into your life, lovers, friends, people that you resonate with. It will help you really tap into the flow of abundance that we all have within us and start to really give you the freedom you want in life. These five tips will also help you have more energy, greater states of just physical vitality and happiness, being where you want to be. The empathic person has so many gifts. They're just wired differently from non-empaths. And no one really gave us a manual for how to operate this different system that we find ourselves embodying. For a lot of us, like me, we learn through trial and error. We learn through a lot of pain, a lot of mistakes, and eventually found our way into learning these tricks. You know, so many of the problems, the issues, the complications that empathic people experience are very similar situations. And we have to learn how to transmute these situations and turn our empathic nature into the asset it is meant to be. And that will really enrich your life in very profound ways. And the five things in this video are going to help you do this exact thing. So number one, and this might be the most important and foundational piece of information you will hear in this video, is to own who you are. Own yourself. Own it. Own it. Own your sensitivity. So, I'm a freaking sensitive. What? Okay. Own your empathic nature. It's not a problem. It is an asset. It's only a problem if you see it as a problem. And regardless whether you want to define it, you know, you'll find it's up to you who you are, who you are in the real way to reach success in all areas of life is to be fully your authentic self. Okay, that's so, so important. And it can be so, so difficult because we have such a strong conditioning. We are all kind of influenced by, for whatever reason, leads us in desire. The desire to fit in, to blend in, to not bump, not go against the grain of society. And that's really difficult for an empathic person because we're not like that. It's not like we're very different on the outside, but we see through a lot of the facade, a lot of the folly that many people blindly sort of adhered to and live their lives from. So there are times it will not feel right. You will not feel right. You'll not feel happy. You'll feel tired. You'll feel depressed. You look like something's missing in your life. If you try to do what everyone else does, which is just fit in and go with the flow. But like everybody else, you've got to let your freak flag fly. You've got to own who you are. Because you, when you really step into who you are, that's when you get the kind of look around and see a lot of the things that you deemed as, you know, causing you to stand out are valuable. They're helpful to you and to your life. And this is a foundational step. I know we all know it's wise to be ourselves, but a lot of us, when it comes down to it, just don't do that because there's resistance. We run into some other people or from ourselves, from our own conditioning. But I'm saying if you have that as a goal, as a priority, I'm going to be myself, no matter what other people say, no matter what uh, other people do, no matter what even I think about myself, I'm just going to be bold, encouraged, see myself. You'll feel a shift in your energy, in your demeanor. 
The self-resistance will start to melt away and you'll feel liberated and free and more aware of the blessings that you possess within yourself. Now, number two is accept who you are, which sounds a bit different. It sounds, you know, similar to number one, but it's a bit different. What I mean by accept who you are, I mean, accept your wiring, accept how you are, accept your sensitivity, accept some of the things that you might have to prioritize in your life that other people just don't have to worry about. If you can accept that you are an empathic person, you do, for whatever reason, tend to be always open and always sensitive. And sometimes you do pick up other people's emotions. I do. And sometimes they'll cling to me and carry with me and I don't like it. But it doesn't seem other people have that affliction. But what we can do is accept the fact that we can do something about it. Like we can optimize our lifestyle to be in harmony with who we actually are and what we are, what we do, how we tick. For example, um, I'm a very introverted person. I'm very sensitive emotionally, and I do feel other people's pain and a lot of angst and anguish a lot. And just being around a large crowd of people can drain my energy. And I don't like get to an extreme degree anymore because I'm aware of that. I accept it. I will schedule in downtime. I will pencil into my schedule and prioritize time of doing nothing. Time of sitting there to close my eyes and meditate. Time with sitting out in my yard and reading. And I make that non-negotiable. I make myself do these things because I've accepted who I am. And therefore, it's not a problem anymore. I don't let it get to the point of overwhelming me. I mean, there's a lot of things that I feel inspired to do in my life that are in a sense challenging for an empath. I, you know, reaching out and coaching people. Um, it's just, if I'm not careful, I will take on the energy of the people that I'm coaching and carry it with me. And I literally have to set limits for myself. I have to set boundaries. I have to wake up early and meditate. Or um, I have to prepackage my food so I remember to eat during the day. I've learned that if I just deny the fact that I'm very sensitive, then I will get completely overwhelmed and be burned out in the circumstances of being around other people. I feel inspired to do, but I've accepted that, okay, there's a possibility that this is how you tip over and you have to honor it. So I do, and it allows me to not have all the negative consequences because I've accepted who I am. So what in your life what in yourself have you not accepted? I know what it's like. It's sort of like, why should I have to take a nap? You know, it's the middle of the day. I'm an adult. Why should I? Well, because you do. Because you'll find you can rest quickly when you take a nap and you're going to feel just perfectly fine in 20 minutes instead of being burnt out, overwhelmed, snapping, and defensive. And again, it takes a long time time to accept this sort of thing. Many of us resent the issues that, you know, we feel we get stuck with. But once you accept them, you get the point. Now the number three, and this is one you all need to hear, okay? Surround yourself with winners. I know a lot of people are probably like, yeah, right, that didn't resonate. So let me explain what I mean by winners. I don't mean the successful, the elite. I don't mean that at all. I mean, set boundaries with the people in your life that don't resonate with you, that don't have your best interest at heart and don't love you the way you love them. Choose to spend time around folks to build relationships with people that resonate, that their energy complements yours and it doesn't suck uh, suck energy away from you or take away from you it doesn't squash your dreams and hopes 
but instead people who support and who have beliefs and assist you. Empathic people have this bleeding open heart and we just want to help everybody and it's beautiful but so often when we do we've run ourselves into the ground and we completely neglect and a very important part of this equation is us. We're not doing any good. We are not setting good empowering example by exhausting ourselves and allowing other people to prey on us like so many of us do. And I'm not saying it's easy. I know it can be difficult and very complicated with relationships when it comes to setting boundaries. But I can say this. Unless you do that, you will not be the best person you are destined to be. You will not help as many people as you possibly can if you sacrifice yourself so frequently by being around people who are draining your energy. I mean, people that don't really resonate with you, yeah, I know it's not easy. It can be tricky. You might have to be clever and you might have to set a boundary that someone's not going to like and they're going to rebel. But you have the right to be happy. You have the right to thrive. Everybody has that right. And when you really start to take that seriously and exercise it, you'll be blown away. Not only by how good you feel, but also by the new relationships you attract into your life. That will just be so satisfying. And in the beginning, it can be like, I just got out of this situation, so it's kind of better. And then I got sucked back in and my energy is draining me. I'm not happy. And then your goal is to be alleviated from those negative circumstances. But then we get to the point that is great. What comes as a result of that is so surprisingly fulfilling. And it comes in the form of other people that will literally start popping into your life because you magnetize yourself to them. The friends, families, teachers, acquaintances, co-workers, business partners. All this will start to just flood into your life. And it'll feel like your life is literally just surrounded by your soul tribe. People that just get you know you, resonate with you, and those relationships, and going through this life not alone, but together as part of a tribe, is so incredibly awesome. But that's only going to come when you really accept that. You've got to set those boundaries and choose wisely who you surround yourself with. Number four is share what you got. And what I mean by that is, you know, I've talked to a lot of people who literally are sitting on gold, sitting on books worth of incredibly valuable, helpful, brilliant information that would sort of just channel through them that they're too afraid to share. You came here to share it. You came to stand out. You came to this express purpose, your authentic self out there in the world. And you know what's going to happen? There's going to be a push and a pull effect. There are some people that you will push away that will not resonate with what you have to say. Not the raw. Just not right for who you really are. And they'll be there. They'll be the criticism. They'll be the naysayers over the people that doubt you. The people that try to tear you down. But there will also be the pull effect. There will be other people you might not have even expected to say, wow, that really resonates with me. That's very helpful to me. Thank you so much for doing that, for saying that. This has really been a game changer. Thank God you exist. Okay? The more you share, the more will come. And you can literally start putting out into the world so much. And as we all know, what you put out is what comes back to you. In the form of relationships, abundance, freedom, good health, good fortune, good luck, good everything. So you need to share and be your true self and express that to the world for you to be happy. And I'll tell you what, even though that yields a lot of desirable outcomes, just the act, just the sharing for the sake of how it feels to share 
and express in itself is deeply fulfilling and it will make you feel whole and complete and very, very happy. And lastly, number five. There is a go with the flow. Empathic people operate almost like, like a force to operate more. So it's what I'll call, for lack of a better phrase, divine timing. Well, you might have these. Your mind's going to chime in and try to help you organize and build up your life, and you should certainly utilize it as a tool. But a lot of times, you impact the people, and they run into these big blocks. It's just roadblocks, resistances, where things just aren't going the way you thought they should. And this can lead to a lot of unpleasant negative energy in your systems and body and life, and it doesn't make sense. It's like, wow, I had this 10-step process. I'm on step five. It should only make sense that step six is to follow. But you need to be more fluid, like water. Go with the flow and use your intuition. Make adjustments on the fly. Whenever it feels appropriate, you can kind of like flow through life. And oftentimes the way you flow through life is going to be a lot different than what your mind would have thought to be the best strategy or way or method. If you can sort of relax the mind a little bit and go with the flow, roll with the punches, then you can tap in to this divine timing and the right person, the right opportunity, the right idea, the right method will come to you at the exact perfect time, just when you need it. And it will really take everything and catapult you forward. And you can start taking these big jumps, these intuitive leaps forward in all areas of your life. And you don't even have to strengthen your legs as much as you might think. You don't train to jump. You just catch the right gust of wind, the right timing. And this is not only going to be like really helpful for obvious reasons as far as advancing your life in positively, quickly ways, but it gives you a feeling of connectedness, flow, harmony. And don't you know there I say serenity in your life where you can take these big jumps, but it feels effortless. And we could certainly use a reminder of all of those things at times in our lives. It doesn't matter where you are at. Hopefully this will in some way help you wherever you are in your life. I'm Marna. Thank you for joining me and have a beautiful rest of your day.